So uh, uh, Rajushi is the domain expert in IAM, API gateway, and API security, etc. And he is very experienced in the integration pattern. And also Laurent is direct, the director on solution engineering from uh, from uh, uh, Nginx. So they are going to talk about the uh, legacy app to mobile, uh, to the modern app in the uh, and the better way to transit. So uh, let me try to share the stage uh, to you. So um, yep. Um, is, are, are you ready on the screen? So I can see. Yeah, maybe you can hide the the the, the Yeah. Okay. I I I I live now here. Good. Okay. So, so thanks, Patrick. Um, yeah, we we wanted to help most of you to face, uh, I would say, one of the challenges that we're uh, hearing here and from a lot of you, um, mainly how to uh, find a good way to transition from a uh, legacy app as there are requirements to uh, support them uh, into, I would say, the more modern way of supporting those new challenges and new uh, applications. So um, in, a, in a short, we're going to try to uh, state the, the problem and, and uh, I would say express exactly what we're hearing and what the challenges that uh, most of our uh, customers and yourself are facing. And um, being, I would say, wise and I would say uh, looking at the, the, the problem from an engineering perspective, how could that problem be addressed and what solutions are uh, uh, available to address it. And after that, we'll uh, wrap up with a few takeaways and uh, and a few resources made available to you. So, Rajesh? Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. <clears throat> well, if you can uh, bring your page up, not if oh, it's... Yep. Can't. I can't, can't hide my, my camera. Uh, that's okay. You can actually just minimize it. Yeah, that's, I'll see. So um, let's start with the, the microservices. There is no secret uh, about the microservices. I don't want to lecture anything about microservices. I'm sure if you guys are here listening to API Days, I'm sure you would have gone through a lot of uh, journey around microservices. Certain things I just wanted to highlight here is about uh, almost all the enterprises uh, understood what uh, microservices can do for their uh, for their business. They won't expo expose their uh, capabilities, their uh, data uh, to conduct their business to their consumers quite easily. And also they want to do the time to market quite easily as well, quite fast, I mean, in agile fashion. So majority of the enterprises are moving into uh, this microservice approach because that helps them to uh, get into the next level in a more agile fashion. We can see that as uh, almost uh, uh, the enterprises which we have visited uh, in the past uh, couple of years uh, seeing increasing uh, like you know day by day to uh, around thousands of APIs they've been running uh, these days uh, looking looking like you know four years back that's not the case. Going to the next uh, slide, the. The API adoption, uh, uh, you know, starting to uh, you know rise is continuing to you know, go in a steady path. There is no, uh, it doesn't look like it's going to you know uh, fade away anytime soon. Because of this, uh, APIs being the primary, uh, you know, uh, the sales uh, channel for a lot of uh, enterprises, they will also have to uh, identify their personas. Who is actually consuming the APIs? Is it the externally facing API or the public users doing it or my partner users are doing that bit or it is internally facing API which is only consumed by uh, the employees or you know internal applications are doing that bit. So the, the, the percentage of actually being consumed of these APIs is you know, very, uh, you know, uh, very different um, between the enterprises. Moving to the uh, next slide. The uh, API is not old. API is every API was there for a, for a long period of time. It was called a little differently back in days. We used to call web services. We used uh, you know monolithic applications to expose uh, services. But the need for uh, the agility, the need for opening up the business, become really really uh, in a, in a fashion. During our monolithic side uh, world. We used to have like a three-tier architecture. We had a complex protocols uh, like XML and so. To be honest, back in days, it's not complex. That's the only option we had, and persistent deployment. During all of this uh, change of the, the dawn of microservice era, and the, the devices gone, you know, smaller and smaller, there was a need for us to uh, support lightweight protocols than super maximals. We want a lighter uh, server environment compared to uh, the bigger environments in the past. 
uh, our um, infrastructure has become more and more a moving targets. So if you see the comparison as it's shown in the dynamic uh, in the in the slide, you can see that it's a, the, it's a quite contrasting uh, against a monolithic application to dynamic. As of today, it is very, very hard for a lot of enterprises to move away from a monolithic, get into dynamic just like that. It's, it's a journey. And uh, we have invested quite a lot in monolithic applications or in a soft service applications. The one thing which I wanted to ask Lauren today is um, uh, moving to the next slide. This this would uh, pretty much it would uh, explain uh, the traditional approach. What how we used to do that that wasn't a working solution. We don't have any problem with that. Uh, I just wanted to highlight that to Lauren, and uh, we want to uh, sorry if you go back to the screen. Sorry, uh, that that wasn't a working solution. We still there is a lot of enterprises continue to do that. Uh, we don't have a choice to moving away from that type of uh, uh, you know legacy. I, some of the companies even you know reluctant to call that as a legacy. They still it's a working model for them, and they want to continue that way. Where while they are transitioning into the modern approach of actually developing microservices, because developing microservices and maintaining that is a really really complex these days. Because every service is needed its own database. That you know inventing and uh, we we have invented a new problem by uh, producing an elegant solution. We are going to have this world. This we are going to have this, you know both the paths for a longer period. So, Lauren, could you please explain like how could you uh, how could you actually you know uh, help us to uh, move from this legacy world or uh, traditional world into this modern application world without compromising the speed? Same time, I don't want to compromise the speed. At the same time, I don't want to you know compromise what we have. We have the essence the, in the monolithic applications. How can we transition that into a modern application? That's that's what I wanted to talk about today. I mean, Good. wanted to hear Thank you. from you. Okay, so let me try to answer you, Rajesh, and to answer all of uh, our attendees here. So yeah, like, like, like you said, there is a, a way and there is a need, a strong need to maintain that uh, legacy. And as you said, it's not forcibly legacy, but it's critical to the business in most of the situations. And why that? Because uh, uh, the, the big fat applications used to have connectors, used to uh, uh, store attributes in different databases, used to rely on different services. So all of those uh, extensions or connections are really required and they need to be maintained live into the organization and need to be maintained live into the production environment. So uh, that's a real challenge that uh, most of our customers are, are facing. And uh, when I say most of our customers, I could easily uh, name, for instance, the service providers. Service providers are, are I would say, legacy uh, owners by default. <laughs> because they, they invest heavily in huge equipment and they don't want to ditch them out uh, uh, on a yearly basis. And while they still have th those legacy constraints, they have to support new uh, protocols, the old and the new, but they also have to uh, de develop new use cases. Uh, those use cases could be based on the old protocols, uh, be on the API or on the trans traffic level uh, type of things. But also they have to uh, develop the new use cases with the new protocols. And this is where I think there is a, a, a big challenge to face for our customers. So maintaining that legacy uh, help, uh, help us and put us in a position where we have to um, address these kind of issues by sometimes transforming the architecture and inserting components uh, to handle uh, those traffic aspects, meaning that uh, for instance, introducing kind of traffic broker, uh, kind of architectural uh, brick, which will understand the traffic, um, analyze the traffic and transform the traffic if needed. And based on that, make the, the, the appropriate, I would say, routing decision to divert traffic to the appropriate, I would say, infrastructure piece or the API gateway, which is uh, relevant for that specific traffic. And that is a real challenge because, again, this has to be maintained uh, accordingly to the uh, uh, support, the support contract that the, 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 the customer would have, and according to the user base, which is probably still using those old protocols. So in that sense, uh, we, we see, and when we discuss with most of our customers, in order to maintain those uh, legacy uh, environment and to start to introduce, I would say, little by little, the new use cases and the, the new protocol, 
uh, they introduced a, a layer for the traffic management piece, which of course needs to be aware of all the protocols and then uh, probably help to divert those traffic towards the uh, right uh, broker, traffic broker to understand this traffic and then make the appropriate routing decision. So that kind of uh, add, I would say, some layer in terms of complexity and sometimes make uh, the maintenance and uh, transition to new use cases a bit more complicated, but somehow it helps as well to maintain the legacy uh, infrastructure in place and to handle the traffic accordingly to the, to the, to the new needs. So in order to start to answer um, Rajesh with his question, what if we come up with a solution somehow which can of combine uh, the traffic management piece and the traffic broker piece, meaning uh, some technology or some technical brick which can convert, transform, manipulate the traffic accordingly, and then uh, divert the traffic toward the right API gateway in order to maintain uh, all of those uh, uh, pieces uh, live. And what, what if uh, that solution or that combination of uh, technology could also enhance a lot of the uh, limitation that most of our customers are, are facing when they have to handle new use cases and uh, um, legacy. For instance, grabbing the proper analytics, uh, introducing the proper layer of security and making sure that they have all of these information at their disposal and they could make the proper analysis and the proper uh, decision making uh, based on that, those info. And somehow help developers as well to dedicate maybe an application chain to handle a proper type of uh, uh, customers or devices or uh, users. And a proper, I would say, uh, ap application chain or client chain, meaning uh, isolating that specific traffic and specific use cases from the, uh, uh, we say, uh, infrastructure lo level uh, and uh, diverting it towards the application chain from a, uh, I would say, natural flow in a uh, proper manner. So in order to do that, um, a good solution, and I would say one of the thought that, that we uh, came up with was to bond two technologies uh, in order to, to do that. And, and we will explore how those technologies can help in addressing those issues. For instance, the uh, F5 technologies, uh, name it TMOS for Traffic Management Operating System, which is the uh, OS which is uh, uh, the heart of the technology and NGINX as well uh, are, I would say, uh, both technologies that could work together in order to support those legacy protocol and provide a few tools to help and to insert some kind of flexibility in the way that we can manipulate and traffic and, and uh, transform the traffic. And if that solution can uh, be considered, uh, it would be great to have it, I would say, as a piece of software and provision it uh, accordingly when needed and decommission it uh, when, for instance, there is no uh, other need to uh, get those customers or those, those legacy uh, infrastructure um, in place. Uh, that could definitely help a lot of uh, our customers and, and that possibly would be a good answer to your question specifically, uh, Rajesh, okay? So how, how to do that and what are the technical, um, I would say, uh, pieces that we can play with in order to do that? The first one is not JS on F5. Um, and I probably would, would think that a lot of people would, would say, yeah, F5, the hardware company. It's not only that, I would say. Timos, for instance, has, uh, I would say, uh, a lot of uh, connectivity, a lot of affinity with not JS. Um, providing the fact that uh, all of the, the pieces related to the traffic management are handled by the uh, operating system itself. That exposes, I would say, a lot of uh, flexibility to the developers through Node.js. And uh, why Node.js? Uh, just because Node.js is used by many of the, I would say, uh, tech um, companies, you name the Netflix, the PayPal, the Uber, for instance, all of those companies are huge, I would say, contributors and users of uh, Node.js. And if we uh, manage to combine both of the technologies, that means that to some extent, it makes it more, I would say, um, um, easy for uh, a developer uh, to address uh, complex challenges and to transform, for instance, a protocol. 
So supporting Node.js on uh, F5 Timos, for instance, help and opens, I would say, a huge set of possibilities where it is, um, I would say, doable for a developer to implement any uh, NPM packages to transform the traffic. For instance, the XML to JSON is one that could easily be uh, ported on that on to that technology and then uh, uh, handle, I would say, kind of a gateway type of protocol uh, before the API gateway or just being the API gateway itself, and then uh, support the legacy protocol and the legacy API protocols, uh, name it XML, and then transform it into JSON and REST API, and then have a simple infrastructure to handle the traffic and to handle the, the, the application. And moving further, that helps also to um, go further into supporting, I would say, new protocols and modern protocol, for instance, gRPC, or GraphQL, you name it. Uh, those protocols are also implemented on top of Node.js and the libraries are uh, available on uh, GitHub. So it gives, I would say, uh, users a uh, capability of bringing those library on top of the F5 Timos, uh, implementing those libraries, uh, maybe tweaking those libraries, and then having the ability to uh, uh, support this new, new protocol into an ex existing application framework without, again, reinventing or re-engineering uh, the, whole, the whole infrastructure. And for instance, I, I mentioned uh, rapidly uh, uh, gRPC, but GraphQL is one of the protocol that we're seeing a huge, I would say, traction with. And having it supported on, on the JS and having the ability to bring it on top of uh, the, the uh, traffic management piece and into that possible solution that we are talking about really helps into having uh, a framework, I would say a tool set to uh, maybe design and prototype, I would say, new use cases uh, on top of the infrastructure. Again, without uh, breaking everything, without, I would say, re-architecturing the whole uh, infrastructure. And that's really something that we're seeing uh, in many instances. And uh, I would then disclose anything, I would say, secret when I'm saying that even it, us at a company level, sometimes we proceed this way. We want to prototype, we want to prove uh, something is working uh, before uh, developing natively that capability. Sometimes we invest some time into uh, 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 grabbing those type of technology and opening up and testing them and, and proof testing it uh, uh, in real life before uh, bringing, that, bringing them live into, into a product. Other capabilities which are available, for instance, uh, also on Nginx, JavaScript on Nginx is one of the technologies that could help developers to extend and to support these uh, transformation of protocols from a new world to the old world. Nginx uh, has a proper implement implementation of JavaScript, which is called NJS, uh, Nginx JavaScript. And it is really so supported on all of the uh, instances that we have. So that means that for a developer, it made easy, I would say, again, uh, to expand the capability of the platform, which is uh, being the API gateway to support these new types of protocol or to transform, I would say, just the traffic. Uh, accordingly to the to the to, to the needs, and one of the good things that we have seen as well while discussing and while uh, I would say scratching my head on the, on the on the question that uh, Rajesh asked me, um, it's interesting to consider that NJS um, could support uh, the NPM that a Timos a five Timos is supporting. So that means again, uh, it made easy for developers to uh, prototype. Uh, this kind of infrastructure or this kind of solution and to bring them uh, faster to the to the business. So again, supporting GraphQL, supporting gRPC uh, before I would say even the products uh, support them natively uh, gives, I would say, some kind of room or uh, some kind of creativity to implement those type of technologies and to bring them, I would say, to a, to a real, I would say, a business case and use case to to validate them and then I work upon them to integrate them into the application chain. Another technical possibility which exists to support uh, this challenge and to help integrating the uh, uh, legacy um, into, into the application chain, for instance, is Lua. Lua uh, in uh, Nginx 
is also a uh, huge platform which is used by uh, many developers and used also to expand uh, and extend the, the, the capabilities of Angelix. One of the biggest implementation of Lua is uh, OpenResty, where there is a, a, a big framework of capabilities which is exposed there uh, just to manipulate traffic. And again, uh, these, these technologies are, are, are really, I would say, made handful for developers to uh, transform one protocol to another or transform data from, from one format to another and to have the whole connectivity that the legacy application has uh, settled down in the organization to, to maintain them as long as possible and as long as needed by the business. So Open RESTY is one of those uh, technologies, but we have seen that due to a lot of testing and a lot of implementation and a lot of feedback from our customers, Sometimes it might not be, I would say, uh, the platform of choice to use Lua uh, to do those uh, type of uh, traffic conversion. One of the trends that we're seeing and one of the, I would say, uh, outcome of the discussions and uh, I would say the assessment that we're doing in the developers community that we're seeing is it's more to extend, for, instant, for, in, for, ex, for instance, NJS or uh, with a Node.js, that's a lot of NJSs in one sentence, uh, in order to uh, uh, accommodate all of the uh, challenges that uh, uh, the applications are, are submitting to the, uh, to the environment. So we, we really see a, a huge, I would say, traction and, and a huge, I would say, application of these uh, technologies into the real world. And that's one of the things that we are, are, are having uh, tested uh, in different environments, different labs, and we, that's, led us to think that Node.js um, is probably one of the, 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 the platform of choice when it comes to manipulate traffic, to transform traffic uh, just because of performance compared to Lua. But again, that brings a lot of concern when it comes to uh, maintain, maintainability of the solution, performance of these solution uh, uh, moving forward, because these things are really, I would say, pieces of codes which are bring together and needs to be maintained for security reasons or for performance reasons or for uh, just tracing reasons. But the flexibility really uh, brings the, the value to most of our developers and most of the, the, the customers to address uh, those new uh, use cases. And uh, before we wrap up, I would ask uh, Rajesh if uh, those uh, pieces of information that I brought just now are uh, helping him to address, to answer this question. Yes. Thank you, thank you very much, Lauren. It's definitely Node.js sounds very, uh, you know, uh, comfortable for. I mean, comparing with the my development hat from the past and the developers uh, from these days, they will be more, more and more comfortable with Node.js because it's a JavaScript application. You can find more uh, resources, more, more uh, experience on this one, so that it's easier for them to extend it. And also, I just wanted to highlight one thing: we talked about more of a transition path from the. Uh, you know, the legacy world uh, into the uh, into the, uh, the modern world. So I would strongly recommend people to use this as a transition, which means like a more of a temporary solution to move from where you are to uh, where you wanted to go to. Don't you know try to go do that as a that as a like a, a long term solution. Otherwise, you will have to maintain that for a very long time. So all of this on you on that one. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Rajesh. Okay, I, I would I would be in trouble if you said no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, after after that, so the, the, Rajesh uh, made a good point. The, the community of uh, developers is really also ramping up. Uh, we we've seen statistics showing that the, the population of de developers on Node.js is really a sur sur surpassing uh, the Ruby or other languages um, community of developers. So that's also a good thing and maybe a good area to invest or to to, to seek for resources. And again, solutions are really bringing, I would say, a lot of uh, value there. Uh, like, for instance, uh, um, opening capabilities, opening possibilities to um, handle any type of traffic. Uh, of course, there is some development effort to put uh, into this. But again, the reward is that you can maintain the, the legacy and, and, and move forward. And all of these being based on software, uh, again, uh, like Roger said, th these are things that could be just provisioned, uh, I won't say on demand, but for a certain amount of time and could be decommissioned 
when needed, and provision on-prem, in cloud. Uh, those technologies are, are really, I would say, a pure software technologies, which are also uh, being, I would say, uh, open to automations through Ansible, through um, uh, Terraform, or all of those, those, those tools are, are, are handy to, to, to manipulate. And one thing which is really important, it saves time from RFPs. Uh, again, when we need to support le legacies and, and make the infrastructure evolve, um, sometimes uh, that goes through uh, complex uh, RFP writing, submitting, evaluating, answering. Uh, those type of uh, tools could definitely help and short shorten these type of processes. So b before closing, I think I'm just over the time. Yeah. So uh, thanks, thanks for uh, sharing. So yeah, just to remind the, the audience that actually uh, Nginx and F5 also got a booth that in the partnership village. So you can actually visit them and also ask them the question because uh, we are one when out of time, so I can't really get uh, the question from the from the public loud. So uh, maybe uh, our speaker can also share your contact in the in the in the chat room and then or, or the audience if you're interested go to the, the booth and then try to ask them the question. There's so many content shared today. I, I think it's really very helpful to all of you. Thank you. Thank okay, you. thank you. So yeah.